Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Tuesday, August 28th, 2012. I'm Darko, and uh, all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. This first video, I'm going to cover the economy, and then we're going to segue into eugenics. This first article I have up is a new run on the banks. Spaniards are pulling out cash at record rates. It says here, according to figures released on Tuesday, private sector deposits fell by nearly 5% in July. It says here, Citing European Central Bank data as public confidence in the banking system reached all-time lows amid a worsening economic situation. Food prices hike punishes UK families, but not just UK. It says here British shoppers are to face new hikes in prices of food, products like bread, pasta, meat due to the impacts of a devastating drought in the United States, which has ravished crops. The severe drought in the States has also affected the price of meat, which is rising due to animal feed costs, experts warn says here the UK even faces a worse situation because common vegetables like peas and potatoes are now being imported from as far as Guatemala, South Africa, and occupied Palestinian territories. Farmers in Britain stressed that heavy rain, possibly chem rain weather modification, and lack of sunshine due to all the aerosols have also delayed or decimated harvests this summer. And finishing up, meanwhile, incomes in the UK are under much pressure from inflation, which has been above the official target for many months. Fuel prices are predicted to go up this winter as some suppliers are already raising their charges. And it's already been known uh, that they're basically um, frauding their customers. They're jacking up the rates, making lots and lots and lots of money. Next up, it's not just the United States. Food inflation will affect the entire globe in 2013. Grocery prices in the U.S. have risen steadily for months now, but because of the drought here at home and other global market forces, food costs are expected to skyrocket around the world as well say experts. In addition, weak monsoons in India and ongoing hunger across the swaths of Africa will all combine to drive food prices higher next year. Again, like, you know, the jet streams, the Gulf streams uh, being weak and weak monsoons. So also you have uh, problems in Russia as well. It says here, if conditions persist beyond this year, uh, analysts note it could be a repeat of the 2007-2008 when food prices soared more than 6% to a 25-year high. This title from the Atlantic, the cheapest generation, the largest generation in America history or American history might never spend as lavishly as its parents did nor on the same things. Since the end of World War II, new cars and suburban houses have powered the world's largest economy and propelled our most impressive recoveries. It says here millennials may have lost interest in both. The ownership society has been overrun by renters and squatters. Nine out of ten millennials say they eventually want a place of their own, according to a recent uh, survey. Fannie Mae says, but this generation's path to home ownership is fraught with obstacles, including low pay, low savings, tighter lending standards from banks, along with student debt. Next up, we have American incomes are falling and near retirees are getting crushed as a study. So annual incomes in the United States have dropped sharply in recent years, says that's the conclusion of a new study by Centier or Centier Research. It says here, which looked into the trend in the median U.S. household incomes in 2000. So 12 years ago, after adjusting for inflation, the median household uh, in the United States earned about $55,000 per year. It says now the median income has fallen to about 51000 The two age groups that have been hit the worst have been the 55 to 64 age group and those in the 25 to 34 age group. So they explain what the problem is or give their reason. They say it's not because of the richest Americans and companies not having enough money to invest. Or um, it says here the problem is customers in the United States economy, average American households are losing ground fast. Then it's not just your imagination. American families are getting poor. So, yeah, it says here that there's been no economic recovery on Main Street. Kind of going off what we were just covering, it says median household income for the self-employed has fallen almost 10 percent while those living in the northeast and the south have only fallen five percent says here that uh, those living in the west and the midwest have fallen 11 percent and 8.5 percent remember this stat that i went over just the other day it says that there were 61 percent of americans were middle income back in 71 and only 51 percent are today it goes on here it says that 85 percent of the middle class americans say it's harder to maintain a middle class standard of living today compared to 10 years ago, along with 62% of these middle-class Americans saying that they have to reduce household spending over the past year. Laid off U.S. workers are taking a huge pay cut at their new jobs. It says here the Great Recession, 
was now entering its third decade and unemployment was still at a record high even when or even the fast food joints in my neighborhood had a two-year waiting list for job applicants. That was by Ernest Klein, Ready Player One. So this is via Associated Press, the U.S. economic recovery hasn't felt much like one even for people who managed to find new jobs after being laid off. Most of them have had to settle for less pay. Only 56% of the Americans laid off from January 2009 through December 2011 have found jobs by the start of the year, the Labor Department said. More than half of them took jobs with lower pay, and one-third took pay cuts of 20% or more. It says the figures would be even lower if people who could only find part-time jobs were included in the total. Are you looking for a good job? Well, don't get your hopes up. It says here, gives a little graph of share of workers with uh, employer-provided health insurance by gender from 19, almost 80 to 2010. You can see all of them uh, basically going down, especially in the uh, for the males. It says here, if you think your job stinks, you're not alone. And if you're looking for a decent job, don't expect one to or to find one anytime soon. So a new analysis of job quality uh, says here, that confirms what many of us has suspected. It says good jobs are vanishing from the U.S. with global trade and uh, divestment, leaving workers stranded on a barren economic landscape. According to a report published by John Schmidt and Janelle Jones from the Center for Economic and Policy Research, it shows a downward spiral beginning long after the recent economic crisis. It notes that since 1979, the good job, one that pays at least 18 an hour, has employer provided health insurance and some kind of retirement plan has become an endangered species. The economy lost about one third uh, of its capacity to generate good jobs. The data shows only minor differences between 07 before the Great Recession began in 2010 to the low point of the labor market. So they, everybody focused on this recession in 08, but it was going on. This, was, uh, this has been taking place for a while now. The deterioration in the economy's ability to generate good jobs reflects long-run changes in the U.S. economy, not short-run factors related to recession or recent economic policy. Conventional wisdom holds that if a person goes to college and gets a degree, they will get a better job. It goes on here and says it also holds that the longer you are in the workforce, the better your prospects for getting a better job or a good job. But as the report shows, this is not the case. And finishing up, 84% of Americans have higher family incomes than their parents did. Those born at the top and bottom of the income ladder are likely to stay there as adults. More than 40% of Americans raised in the bottom quintile of the family income ladder remain stuck there as adults and 70% remain below the middle. African Americans are more likely to be stuck at the bottom and fall from the middle of the economic ladder across a generation. Four in five mothers are in fear for their children's future over house prices, debts, and pensions. So it should be a time of hope or full of hope and aspiration for a bright future in the making but a combination of fears over rocketing housing costs personal debts and shrieking pensions have casted a cloud or the delights of bringing up a child a survey says one of the biggest concerns for their children is uh, they'll never be able to afford to buy their own home and will be forced to rent throughout their adult life some 80 percent felt the chance of getting onto the housing ladder would be worse for their children than it was for them in the early 1980s, the average price of a home was 30,000 pounds, but the same property today would cost 162,000. So it says the report also found that almost 80% can predict that levels of personal debt would be worse for their children, and lastly, 87% said the state pension would also be worse for their children. This is crazy. Greek prime minister says country to sell off islands and bid to avoid bankruptcy. So I think this, these comments say it all. Is this guy in... This guy, an agent for the U.S. or Germany, selling off the islands, they are stark staring mad. Come out of the euro and devalue their own currency. For God's sake, don't sell your birthright for the almighty euro. But that's what it's all about, right? Privatization and that, uh, breaking you down into IMF receivership. It says here, Greek trader explains why the country is heading for a social tipping point of rebellion or civic mutiny. A trader in Greece gives Business Insider a grim assessment of the mood in the country right now. He's afraid that there's little visibility regarding the political uh, developments over the next few months who might well toss a coin. At some point, however, he believes that they'll reach some kind of social tipping point regarding the ability of the Greek households and society to absorb more austerity measures and continuing steep decline in economic activity and ever rising un unemployment. It says here this uh, may result in social rebellion and even civic mutiny goes on here and says this is the game, game plan that the neo-communists of Syriza have been preparing for over the past year or so. 
So he basically goes on there and it says that um, nobody really has any confidence in this. He says, sorry, I cannot offer more optimistic or positive picture. And remember this article, we'll make a killing out of, food, out of the food crisis, says Glencore trading boss Chris Mahoney. Drought is good for business, says the world's largest commodities trading company. This is my website, ggnonline.com. Um, also on YouTube is DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. You can go in there and check out this poll. It's closed, but you can see the results of uh, basically what's going on in Russia and destabilization and that. So you can enter your email address and follow GGN there. Also, I'd like to thank those that have donated. It's very much appreciated. Um, okay, so moving on, we're talking about food, right? How about how they're making a killing, an engineered drought, engineered food crisis, engineered pandemics and everything, right? Engineered economic crisis. So it's all an illusion, right? I mean, it's real. It affects people. Uh, it really does affect people personally. So, I mean, in Greece, there, you know, people jump off buildings and kill themselves. You know, people in the United States now, you know, some people are going in killing bosses. So you're starting to see what I call um, this engineering blowback. Then you have people like this, like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which are all about vaccinating third world populations. Um, it's about population control measures. Water shortages could force world into vegetarianism. So soy dogs and free vaccinations for all. That's right. Note the following. If you click through the link, here's a screenshot. Global development supported by Bill and Melinda Gates Eugenics Foundation. Food shortages could force world into vegetarianism, warned the experts, the scientists, the eugenicists, right? Water scarcity's effect on food production means radical steps will be needed to feed population expected to reach 9 billion by 2050. And of course, they target what changes towards diets common in Western nations. Now, just remember this. I've covered this so many times before. You have British royalty eating Angus beef. They have their own Angus organic farm. Um, you have the Chinese Communist Party. They have their own organic fields of uh, produce and meats. You have the elites like Bill Gates. Health. They're they're not drinking fluoridated water. They're drinking good water, spring water, whatever, and they're eating organic food. They want you to eat shit turned into food. Literally, uh, Japanese creating what? Food, meat, meat synthesized meat out of uh, out of uh, shit, and also printing, 3D printing of synthesized meat was backed by one of the PayPal founders or, or the guy who runs it. And also you have what? Ooh, a new diet could be insects. We could eat insects. So it's all about uh, making you feel bad for living and breathing air as they poison it at the same time. So the real deal here is it's not that there's too many people, not enough resources, is that they're not being allocated effectively, and that is the engineering to call the population, to keep it under control, because too many people are too hard to... Uh, uh, keep controlled. You can't, you can't, you know what I mean? There's just so many people. So you got to reduce those numbers when you, uh, if you look at it from the perspective of the elites. So veiled threats by prominent neo-Malthusians call population, human population, or expect vast die-off in the 24th from explosive reports. In a report published last April by the Royal Society titled People and the Planet, the elitist UK-based society calls for massive population reduction and deindustrialization of the West. So we're going to cover this, and um, in part two we'll come back and we'll continue with eugenics. But this deindustrialization is important because that's what we were just covering, those numbers. All those numbers as far as the, um, the degradation of the economy and people's standard of living was what? From 1980 to now. And you can see it from 1980 to now how it got progressively worse. All the different industries just basically shipped overseas. I mean, people literally training the replacements, Chinese. So this was by design. So I just to me, it's just kind of ironic when you have uh, people uh, criticizing the diet of the West, like, um, what is it, Prince Charles or something like that, uh, saying that Americans should stop eating beef when he himself has his own Ingus beef farms. So it says here, that listed among its key recommendations, the report proposes several measures similar to the one put out recently by MIT in which drastic reduction of the population is called for in the name of modeling and predictions. Immediately after the Royal Society released its call for more death in mega cities, uh, little Babylon cities, none other than Paul Ehrlich weighed in to regurgitate his own eugenics fancies. It says the population resources multiply together. You have to deal with them together. And he says we have too much consumption among the rich and too little among the poor. Aw, he cares. 
please join me in part two. Thank you.